All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be talking to an individual who's got quite the fight going down, BKFC 18, and we've got some heavyweight gold on the line. We've got the defending titleist, Joey Beltron, getting in there on Saturday, June 26th, knuckling up, toeing the line, and defending against Sam Shoemaker, and I have Joey back on the show. How's your day going so far there, man? Going good, man. Just wrapped up uh, session number three, I believe. I don't know. It's all a blur, but just training, um, this is the hell week for me, when we really, really fucking push it and hit that last little bit, uh, before we start to tone it down and, and, and land the jet into fight week, fight day. Yeah, it sounds like you're having a real champ camp there, man. Absolutely, man. I could not be, could not be but happier with, with uh, my training uh, my coaches, the level of sparring that I've been able to get out here in Miami is just second to none, and, and I'm really happy. Yeah, and I imagine that is coming from a few different sources there, just in the sense that I saw the Instagram post a little bit ago where you were getting inducted into the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame there, and you were with you know Scott, Burt, and everything like that. How did that moment feel for you? Because that looked really cool, man. It was very cool, man. Honestly, all... all I'll admit, like I didn't really take, I didn't really take it that seriously until I was actually there, and then I got around like just the whole culture of Belfast and just a weird like aura that I that, like stepping into the gym where John L. Sullivan did his training and like really be around all that like historical artifacts, man, and then like going to the ceremony and watching. See how much it, like the ceremony meant to other people, meant to Scott, meant to the people of Belfast, meant to everybody involved in the BK and the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame, and and it really, really let me know like this is something way bigger than me, man. It, it was awesome. I'm, I'm very, very honored to be part of part of it. Yeah, an amazing honor to be had. And like in past conversations we've had, it always seemed like you had a level of respect for, you know, the Police Gazette's rich championship. But you're talking about how certain things sunk in a little deeper when you were at the Hall of Fame there. Like, is a similar sentiment attached to like even appreciating the Police Gazette belt a little more and just the rich history underneath it? Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, like, it's pretty cool. Like, finally, like, I know, like, the history, like, how... You know how, like, the belt that the John L. Sullivan originally carried was, like, the American the, the American belt. And how John L. Sullivan pissed off the commissioner of the Police Gazette. I forget how he pissed him off. So he stripped him, somehow found a way to strip John L. Sullivan. Like, put diamonds on the belt, made it the world title, had these other two guys <laughs> fight for it. Yeah. And then John L. Sullivan worked his way back around. And so when he won the world title... That was, that was it. He won the world title. He never actually defended it because then after that, they, they switched to glove box. So that's why, like, it's really, really sunk in how much of an honor it was for me to actually win the title and then defend it because nobody else in history has, has ever defended it. Yeah, and that was something I was going to ask you about there because, like, you fought Marcel Stamps last time out. You, you know, you know, not to be punny, but put a stamp on that there. You got the fourth round finish and everything. And like you said, the first to successfully defend that hardware. Like, how important is that just in terms of, like, a career capstone, like a memorable aspect of your career? Like, how much did that mean to you to be able to do that? I mean, I, it, it meant, you know... I mean, what way more is the words can describe? I mean, honestly, to be it's one thing to win the title, but I, I'm a firm believer you're not really the champion until you defend the title. So to to, to be the first to defend it, not only not only for BKFC, but for also the the Police Gazette title. I mean, it definitely was like a, like a like an aha moment. Finally, you know, finally, like it's almost like. It validated the last 14 years of effort and, uh, you know, all the fights, all the ups and downs in the UFC and Bellator and just the whole wild ride and pitch to get here to finally be solidified as a, as a reigning and defending bare knuckle fighting Hall of Fame champion. It's pretty badass. 
Oh yeah, super badass, no doubt, man. And just I remember even when we were talking around BKFC nine, there was that not being positioned in the main event, like kind of like, oh, what's going on here? But it's almost like you're getting accustomed to being in the top of the marquee sort of feature now. I mean, you got the appearance coming up here, and just I imagine you know it was cool last time to be top in the marquee, but just a card like this, like this, you know, massive show, four world titles on the line. Like, how does all of that feel for you, man? Oh yeah, man! It, it's definitely, it's definitely something huge, and I feel a level of honor. First of all, with all the superstars and all the local Miami guys that are on the card to 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 be chosen to be the main event, it's, it's something huge. It's an honor and also responsibility to go out there and you know and set the house on fire and put on a, a stereotypical Joey Beltran type fight. And, and really entertain the people and really put a stamp on, on my second title defense. Yeah, no doubt, man. It's really cool to see all of that. But I was also noticing as of late, it seems like you and Britton Hart are dating. Like, how cool is that? I mean, you both have your different fights coming up and stuff like that this summer. It seems like you're getting in good work together on a regular basis. And I imagine also it's cool in the personal life, just someone who understands the grind of it and just the process of it all. I mean, yeah, absolutely, man. You said it right there. I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome, it's awesome. Like, we push each other in the gym. Um, but also, too, like, we'll, uh, we're able to check each other and say, hey, man, you might want to take a day or take a half day, hit the, hit the cryotherapy or hit a hot tub session instead, you know, like, you know, instead of like, ah, push, 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 push. Like, you know, because it has to be a balance or else you'll never make it to the finish line. Um, you know, and then on the personal life, I mean, honestly, man, I mean, she's freaking awesome. She's awesome. And I, it really, really crazy how I, I went through all those fights, all those years in the UFC and Bellator and everything. I thought I was retired. And then I went to the most violent, one of the most violent forms of combat out there, you know, bare knuckle fighting. And then I won the title. And then I was, I went to a show and sat down ringside seats and boom they sat me next to Britton Hart and that's like it's crazy how fucking life works like that man but you know I always tell her like finally like she like uh she really helped life make sense you know I used to always wonder like well what am I gonna do like <laughs> what's this fighting shit really worth what's it all for and uh you know at the end of the day if it was to meet Britton it was definitely worth it that's cool. So you guys ended up, you know, initially chopping it up ringside at a BKFC event. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Nate Shook, who, who sat us next to each other, because that was the biggest hookup ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, maybe he was looking out for you there, it seems like. But, I mean, you got a, another guy looking out for you in a certain way, too. I mean, getting in that work with Hector Lombard there. I mean, that must be a great person to have in the gym just I mean not even just on the basis of him being an excellent fighter but also him looking to be in his own title fight there and emerge victorious so I imagine the vibes are really good in the gym yeah man I mean Hector's super (laughs) his his energy is infectious like he's always positive always like upbeat every time he comes to the gym like he like lights the gym on fire with his energy He's, he's fucking he's comedy man he's good for laughs great to train with uh we push each other when we spar and we have but it's weird like we push each other but it's like fun and competitive so it's like not really necessarily like trying to like kill each other but it's like we get hard don't get me wrong we bang it out but it's like fun yeah it's fun yeah just existing in that space where you're given good hard work but you're not taking liberties with your sparring partners like that kind of fine balance you're saying absolutely absolutely we definitely like uh, respect each other, respect where we've been. We, he's a he's a veteran like myself. Been both, you know. He he had goals in Bellator and and fought fought in the UFC, and you know. So it's it's been wild, man, for both of us. So it's pretty cool that we're here together in, at this stage of the bare knuckle journey of our career. Yeah, and it seems like just great works being had all around, like working with. You know, Smile and Sam and Hill Street Boxing Gym seems like it's a staple and everything like that, or at least a place you've visited. So getting in great work at just awesome facilities and 
with great people too. And I also love like just the fact that you're so involved in your community in the sense of just like, you know, teaching kids martial arts and stuff like that. As much as you're, you know, making history in the bare knuckle space, like how important is that kind of like mentorship role to, I guess, keeping you grounded to a degree? Oh man, it's, it's of huge importance to me. And I'm, I'm super happy now to finally get some traction with, with the kids that's here at Boxstar Studios in Miami because that's, that was always a huge part of my life in California, you know, teaching, teaching kids classes. Like, it gave me balance. It gave me, like, something that I had to get up for. Like, regardless of – regardless of if I took a big L on a fight on Saturday night and lost in front of however many thousands of people, it didn't matter because my kids were expecting me at class on Monday. So no matter what, I had to put, wipe my tears and suit up and show up for, for them. And, and – you know, man, in many ways, like, my, my kids' classes throughout the year always, like, kept me balanced. So, I'm super happy. To, like I said, finally, we got some traction. We got some good good little group over here at Boxstar Studios. And uh, it's of huge importance to me. Yeah, I love hearing that, man. Just such a cool dynamic. Like, if I was a kid in the community getting to work with, you know, the champ, it'd be just, you know, such an inspiration. So, cool to hear that you get a lot out of that, too. But I want to chop it up about this fight here because you're fighting an individual in Sam Shoemaker who obviously has been a stalwart of the BKFC circuit for a bit as you have I mean got that impressive KO of Bobo O'Bannon last time out at BKFC 15 like what are your thoughts overall on him as an opponent and just what he brings to the table I mean overall I I, I respect his skills um I've been training accordingly to deal with, with his skill set, and I'm very confident and that I have the recipe to put him to sleep. So that's what I'm looking to do. And I'm looking to do it by the third round. That's interesting. I love the I love the confidence heading into it and stuff like that. It should be a barn burner of a fight if, you know, both of your prior fights are any indicator. But usually when I have you on the show, I talk a little pro wrestling. I'm kind of wondering if you're, you know, keeping up nowadays with certain things. Because I think last time we were talking, I think you were saying you were watching like a bit less of the AEW kind of stuff there. Like, are you are you taking in a bit of pro wrestling as of late or maybe not so much because you're focused on the fight prep? I mean, honestly, not so much because um, we haven't really, I haven't really fully moved into my apartment yet. I don't have a TV so I haven't really caught every now and then I'll catch stuff like if it comes across you know like my timeline on, on Instagram and stuff like that uh, I, I will say this I'm happy that they finally made Roman, Re- Roman Reigns a heel oh, yeah. in WWE uh, I always thought he would be way better as a heel and really let that like arrogant kind of like kind of like the, how The Rock was like that arrogant like pompous attitude like so I'm really, I'm really happy that he's he's going with that angle, and uh, I'm interested in Seth Rollins because I can see the outfits that he's wearing now, and I don't really watch too much of it, uh, but I want to watch it just based on what he's wearing. Yeah, I was gonna say, could we see Joey Beltran maybe rock like a Seth Rollins drip master kind of outfit for a future BKFC fight, or maybe not so much? Oh, that would be hilarious! <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fresh, I gotta catch up on what 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 the whole storyline is. But like I said, man, it's one of those things that's interesting that comes across my timeline. What the hell is this guy doing? Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, that's what it's all about, just getting the attention. And yeah, definitely some good wrestlers there for sure, man. But you've been great with your time, and I always enjoy getting to talk to you before these you know, big fights and everything. But just in being mindful of your schedule, is there anything maybe you'd like to sort of add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping things up here, man? Uh... No, not really, man. It's just everything's just uh, all systems go. Just uh, you know, same same stuff, different day. <laughs> just train, train, train. Get ready for the fight. So I'm excited. I think this uh, Sam Shoemaker is gonna I'm gonna come out. And he's gonna bring it. He's gonna try to take my head off. I think he really wants the title. So I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's gonna play around the edge and try to work behind his jab. I think he's gonna make my job a lot easier and try to come take my head off. So I'll be ready. 
Yeah, and I think being ready is a sentiment shared by the whole bare knuckle boxing fan base there. People can check that out. BKFC 18, Beltran versus Shoemaker going down Saturday, June 26th. Going to be an amazing bout. Heavyweight hardware up for grabs. BKFC, Police Gazette Gold. And yeah, just going to be an amazing fight, man. One I was definitely already excited for, but compounding the excitement much further talking to you there. So thanks for the time, as always, and just enjoy the rest of your day, man. All right, man. You have a great one. Thank you for your time.